Hello and welcome back to episode 66 of The Outer Worlds. I'm Vic and you're watching yet another Let's Play channel. So, as promised, let's get on up this big old central elevator here and uh, perhaps finally exit the pit. I don't know about you, but I was getting a little tired of Pittsburgh anyway. Whatever comes of this, I'm just real glad to know you are. And not even I could hear what those girls said just now. So you definitely won't be able to. Hey, this... After all you've done, all the work you've destroyed, all the money you've cost me, your misguided crusade has doomed Halcyon. I'm just rooting out corruption. Idiot! I'm not the one marching to my death in a maximum security prison. In any other circumstance, I'd admire your boldness. In this one, however, I have only two words for you. Fuck off. Chairman Rockwell. How dare you? Even thinking about killing the chairman of the Halcyon board is a felony. Thankfully, you're in a prison already. Find the nearest cell and wait until I'm done here. Then I'll drag you to the executioner myself. How long until you're done? Is that sarcasm? Do you know what I do to people who employ the lowest, most base form of humor? I fire them. Alas, as you are woefully unemployed, I'll have to do the next best thing and have you killed. In the next room is the finest auto-mechanical purveyor of death ever made. Try not to scratch the paint with your skull, it was fucking expensive. I appreciate that you waited until after the first minute to start dropping those F-bombs. Uh, but I am gonna get in there and I'm gonna kill you. Kinda interesting, isn't it? I think those pods look just like the ones in the Hope. Oh, look at that. That's a big boy. Got, uh, got a shield on the left. And, uh, standard Sam-looking attachment on the right. So let us get some. I'm supposed to say that we should fucking go, right? That's what everybody says. You got nimble fingers, Captain. Do I ever? Real slick. Ooh, a slow one. Designate Ram as a hostile intruder. Yeah, that sounds funny. Oh, the big boy is Ram, huh? Isn't that cute? His shield is a, is a pop-up. Are his, are his friends going to get him or what? Do I, do I have to get in there first? Oh. I was going to shoot off my mouth. Mm -hmm. Bad time for a reload. There we go. So that, that was the f finest auto mechanical whatever, couldn't be bothered to listen to the rest of what that guy was saying. Money can buy. Well, I don't imagine I scratched the paint. More like I corroded it. And that's it. That's all that my hacking did, is it woke up those two silly little instantly dead drones. Good thing all I wanted was the XP. Well, oh, come on. What do you suppose this pretty spinning doodad does? I know that explodes, but looks like maybe it explodes with N-rays. I suppose it's a fluid pump. It's probably a fuel fluid pump. This is a really cool room and we and we didn't get to take much advantage of it. I'm a little disappointed. Oh, tell me it's going to wake up and I'm going to fight it again. Nope. Do you suppose the chairman has any other 
treats in store for me? No. This looks pretty... Pretty office-y, doesn't it? Okay, let's just... Let's just... What? Huh. Let's just get up there, ladies. Did the girls even get a chance to shoot at him? Come here, you. Thank you. Okay, so we killed the adjutant, and we killed the chairman. Oh, hey, Phineas. How you doing, buddy? I got you hooked up to some kind of really thorough execution chair there. Looks like chemical and electric. What's going on out there? Just a storm. All right. Uh. Ah. You don't know how glad I am to see you. You lunatic. You broke into the board's own fortress and killed the chairman just to rescue one doddering old man. You are absolutely out of your mind. And I can't begin to thank you enough. The board never stood a chance. Ah, all in a day's work for you, huh? You've broken the board's stranglehold on this colony, and you saved my life. But there's still so much we have yet to accomplish. You and I are going to have to work harder than ever to save Halcyon. I'm afraid the situation is far worse than any of us ever anticipated. I was just about to pop open some drinks. I would like nothing more than to celebrate this victory, but we have a serious problem on our hands. Earth has gone dark. We haven't received a single message in three years. There's been no communication, no signals, nothing. Two years ago, the Earth's Directorate's frigate disappeared on their way back to Earth. We don't know what they discovered when they arrived, or if they arrived at all. They haven't exactly been hands-on around here anyway. So there's one less rubber stamp to worry about. Earth is humanity's home planet, Miss Fenhill. The psychological effects of losing our original home will be devastating. You mean we're all alone out here? Really alone? I'm afraid so, Miss Holcomb. Halcyon is the only home we have left. Returning to Earth is no longer an option. We're in serious trouble, my friend. Do you know what this means for Halcyon? We can't rely on Earth for support anymore. We've been cut loose. We're entirely on our own. Yeah, but when did we rely on Earth for support? Because it doesn't seem that we've been getting much. I guess we'd better get started. Yes, we do. You've done a marvelous thing. You've succeeded where anyone else would have failed, including me. We must begin the revival process immediately, starting with the hopes of brightest minds, and then we're going to fix this damn colony, one problem at a time. We're going to need a leader, and I can't imagine a better person for the job than you. What do you say, old friend? Will you help us? I'm the only competent person left. You won't hear a word of disagreement from me. <sighs> When I revived you, I thought we were going to save this colony all by ourselves. But I was wrong. We can't save Halcyon on our own. We're all going to have to pull together, somehow. We are not a colony anymore. Our last connection to Earth has been severed. I don't know if we'll survive, but we're going to have to try our best. Don't tell me that's it. The OSI teaches that everything in the universe happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. From the moment he landed in Emerald Vale, his actions altered the course of history. The events on Tartarus brought about the end of the board's authority. But the board's mistakes would haunt the colony for decades to come. The damage they left behind would require the work of a generation to repair. Dr. Phineas Wells began reviving a handful of the Hope's colonists. Engineers, scientists, technicians, and intellectuals. 
They were among the brightest minds the Earth had ever sent out into the stars. The Hope scientists and engineers woke up in a colony descending headlong into total collapse. With no way to return to Earth, they had no choice but to band together and devote themselves to the cause of saving Halcyon. The people of Halcyon were nothing if not hardy. In the absence of the board's authority, many of the colony's settlements banded together with a single purpose in mind, survival. Life was especially hard in the years to come. Some towns dissolved by attrition and starvation, but most of them found a way to carry on. In the years to come, Halcyon was forced to reckon with its newfound freedom. The board was gone, and for better or worse, the colony was responsible for its own destiny. As the colony struggled to survive, the inspirational story of the iconoclast spread like wildfire, and Graham was able to bring many of the smaller Terra 2 townships into the fold. However, his zealous obsession with spreading the word blinded him to the needs of a growing organization, and the movement was unsustainable at scale. The iconoclast way seemed to work best, and ultimately petered out on Monarch. Consumed by paranoia, Lilia Hagen took Sublight Salvage in a controversial direction, openly accusing board officials of an extraterrestrial conspiracy. One day, an accident at the Groundbreakers' docking bay silenced her forever. Time would tell if her replacement could keep the Sublight family together. Adelaide McDevitt replaced Reed Thompson as the leader of Edgewater. She and her followers transformed Edgewater in their image. Anyone loyal to Reed was pressured into leaving town, and those who stayed behind adapted to her way of life. Adelaide transformed the old cannery into a new garden. The nearby Edgewater Cemetery provided a convenient source of fertilizer. As for Reed Thompson, it was said that he lasted exactly two days outside the walls of Edgewater. Years later, a marauder was found in possession of his hat. Under the leadership of June Lake Tennyson, the groundbreaker held firm against corporate influence. The ship's mechanical stability gave June Lake the time to educate a promising generation of engineers schooled in her family's traditions. The future of the groundbreaker looks promising. The rediscovery of the hope and the abandonment of the Lifetime Employment Program forced Byzantium to come to terms with some uncomfortable realities about the state of Halcyon. While Byzantines were reluctant to surrender the luxuries they'd grown accustomed to, the board's diminished authority gave them little choice in the matter. Nearly everyone had to learn to make do with less. Some even had to get jobs. It was a dark time indeed. Tragic. Even the Gorgon asteroid, though a distant enigma to most of Halcyon, felt the aftershocks of your actions. Olivia and Minnie Ambrose worked together to cure the marauders Adrena Time had created. Through their partnership as scientist and administrator, they discovered the harmony that had eluded them as mother and daughter. And through years of patience and effort, they discovered the means to wean Halcyon from the scourge of Adrena time. In spite of everything, the Gorgon asteroid remained a sobering reminder of the potential for progress and disaster in humanity's most ambitious efforts. The Rizzo's company in Halcyon dissolved after the collapse of the board. Needless to say, the launch of Spectrum Brown was indefinitely delayed. A stockpile of Spectrum Brown remains buried deep beneath the ruins of the old distillery, abandoned to time and attrition. With the dissolution of the board, Ruth Bellamy found herself without the two constants in her life, Byzantine culture and her sister Belinda. In the face of this new reality, she struggled to find a direction for her life. The colony had moved on from Halcyon Helen, and would require new heroes in the years to come. And so Ruth Bellamy decided it was time to exit stage left. 
she quietly disappeared from public view. The dissolution of the board did not mean the dissolution of the ambitions of Cedric Kincannon, the charismatic leader of Sublight Underground. Cedric offered Slug's transportation services to the newly thawed colonists and set to work ferrying resources and food wherever they were most needed. For better or worse, slug headgear became fashionable in the following years. As the board began to disintegrate, Spencer Woolrich found himself at a crossroads. Cling to what little stardom remained to him, or help usher Halcyon into its new future. To the surprise of many, perhaps himself most of all, Spencer chose the latter option. Having learned a variety of different skills in the many different roles played throughout his lengthy career, Spencer founded a radio serial dedicated to staying alive despite the odds. His subjects included how to survive violent encounters with only grazing wolves, dispense pithy one-liners for tense scenarios, and, of course, how to look good doing both. After a brief attempt at dating Helen as one person rather than two, which both Bertie and Helen found too strange, Bertie struck out on his own to try his hand at raising woolly cows. Many of his former Rangers teammates soon followed, accompanied by the woolly cow the team had originally plied with alcohol. The dairy farm thrived under Bertie's leadership and care. The dairy rangers privately believed that the woolly cows softened Bertie's temper considerably, although the only one brave enough to say this to his face was promptly headbutted. Due to the board's dissolution, Many of the Prophet's old customers no longer found quite the same value in productivity seminars that they once had. With her business drying up, the Prophet chose to take her followers down a new path. Months later, salvagers on Eridanos found clues leading them to a seemingly abandoned bunker out in the wilderness. Inside, they discovered horribly mangled corpses, sacrificed to a blood-scrawled portrait of a sprat-headed deity. The Prophet was not among the bodies. Your influence further cemented Ellie's perspective. She understood she could never truly rely on others, so she set about making sure she wouldn't have to. With a steady income from the life insurance payouts, she was finally able to afford a ship of her own. She enjoyed a long and infamous career running missions across the system. Some of them were even legal. Life in Halcyon was sobering for Felix Melstone. The grand revolution he dreamed of never came. There was no great awakening for the colony, no celebrations in the streets. There was only the hard, desperate work of trying to repair a broken colony. Felix never had a head for numbers, but if there was labor to be done, he was there to help. Eventually, Felix realized that the work of a revolution was done with two hands. As much as he enjoyed his adventures aboard the Unreliable, the vicar known as Max eventually decided that it was time to move on, to live out the life he had sought so long to create. He knew there were many in the colony who carried burdens much worse than the ones he had struggled with, and he devoted himself to easing their suffering wherever he could. He only ever took up arms again to defend the defenseless, unshackled from a lifetime of striving and fighting the universe and himself. Vicar Maximilian de Soto was finally at peace. Though Parvati eventually grew comfortable aboard the Unreliable, she never quite came out of her shell. She seemed to prefer the company of Ada to the crew, and she could often be found neck deep in cables and grease, telling Ada funny stories from her childhood. While the colony fell into chaos, she found an island of relative peace with Ada, 
and they formed an unusual bond. She decided to remain aboard the Unreliable permanently as its chief and sole engineer. The SAM unit that accompanied you spread awareness of the product line's superior sanitation and maintenance capabilities across what was left of the colony. This led to a boost in SAM unit sales. Did you know that SAM units are the longest lasting, toughest acting cleaning solution in Halcyon? Minister Clark was released from house arrest and his contact with you gave him a sense of renewed purpose and vigor. Once it became clear that no help would be coming from Earth, he threw his considerable efforts and talents into helping Halcyon manage the crisis before it. As for Dr. Phineas Wells, he spent his remaining years in his orbital lab. Though he was always haunted by the failures of his past, he was determined to make things right by building toward the future. Dr. Wells was able to revive many more scientists and engineers than he first expected thanks to the additional batch of chemicals you stole from the Ministry. Wells never forgot about the human lives that were lost in acquiring these chemicals. The revival project was hard and painful work. But in the end, despite limited resources, over half the Hope's colonists were successfully revived. Even after Wells passed away, the Hope scientists and engineers worked night and day to pull Halcyon from the brink of collapse. Their efforts continue to this day, which may be reason enough for optimism. Dr. Wells laid the groundwork for the project to save the colony, but he would never live to see the fruits of his labor. He passed away a few years later. His work was carried on by the scientists and engineers he revived. Life will never be the same in Halcyon. It is widely agreed that the colony has a chance of stabilizing within a generation owing to the hard work and determination of the surviving colonists. Recovery is a distant goal, and the path is long and uncertain. But the people of Halcyon carry on, determined as ever. And what about you, the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon? You brought an end to the chaos on Tartarus, and proved yourself the most capable leader left in the colony. You administered the colony in your own image. With the old power of the board destroyed, a new government of Halcyon rose with you at its center. With your steady hand, you guided Halcyon through the turbulent years that were to follow and helped ensure the survival of the colony until the end of your days. No one knows what's happened to Earth, and no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this. The name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come. And, and then there were credits. Wow. I really thought I was going to get a few more episodes out of this. <laughs> I, uh... <coughs> Man... That, that ending was, was very abrupt. I don't know how much time I should spend going on about what I think of the game. I mean, we've been in it for 66 episodes, so certainly we've, we've seen and heard plenty from me about it already. Um, I feel really let down by that ending, though. Um, he, Eridanos had a much more climactic climax. And uh, Gorgon had a, had a much more satisfying resolution. Um, but this was just like, yeah, okay, fight the fight the robot. That's not really that hard, and and kill the chairman, and then bada bing, done. I mean, we got it all wrapped up, sure. Um, and we also know that there is a sequel coming at some point. One wonders what the sequel could be about. It'd be fun if it was about a mission to, to get back to Earth and find out what happened. <laughs> but, uh... That wouldn't really play very much like this, so I don't know if that would be thematically appropriate. Yeah, overall it was fun. Um, worth my time, anyway. 
And uh, I, guess, <laughs> I guess a few people have watched an episode here and there, so I don't know. Make of that what you will. Um, I don't know. I, I, was, I was so was not ready for this to be over. I, I hadn't thought at all about what I might say about this. So, you know what? Mm, I'm done. Uh, come back and see me again next time, and uh, we'll be doing something else. That's it. Something else. That's all I have to say. Talk to you soon.